Welcome to this installment of the Secure Your DNS, Secure Your Network series. My name is Jim Rooney, Director of Product Management at Diamond IP, and the goal of this video series is to break down into bite-sized chunks the many ways that the domain name system, or DNS, can be attacked or manipulated for nefarious purposes, and to suggest defensive measures that you can take to protect and defend your DNS and thereby better secure your network. In this video, we're going to talk about DNS tunneling. The objective of DNS tunneling is to basically use the DNS protocol as the transport mechanism. This can be used by attackers to collect and aggregate and transport or exfiltrate sensitive information using DNS. The advantage of using DNS is that because of its necessity in every, pretty much every application that people use, from web browsing to email to other IP applications, DNS is the critical ingredient or protocol that is used to translate human-readable text web addresses into computer-readable or usable binary addresses or IP addresses. So DNS provides that fundamental link and thereby is generally permitted to flow through freely through networks. Attackers try to take advantage of this free flow communications by encoding messages into DNS. So it serves as, in essence, a covert channel that can be used for exfiltration or for otherwise communicating with a malware command and control site, for example, to not only steal information, but perhaps to download software that can be used to update the malware to perform other tasks. Uh, so in general, serving as a covert channel. Attack forums include the usage of software within the uh, one end of the tunnel, the, uh, the client endpoint, if you will, and it encodes the data to be transported into the form of DNS re resource records. And we'll see there's a variety of resource record types that attackers use or different tunneling utilities use. This formulated DNS query is then sent to the tunnel endpoint on the internet. And again, since it's a DNS query, it's allowed to pretty much flow freely, freely through the network, through the firewall, out to the internet, to the tunnel endpoint that the attacker has established. And this uh, attacker endpoint appears as a DNS server. It's basically authoritative for an attacker-generated domain name, and then it encodes the information to be exfiltrated in the form of a DNS query, as we'll see in just a moment. And so the tunnel endpoint then takes, accepts that query, if you will, um, and then decodes it and passes it on to the destination, the attacker's, let's say, repository, where they want to collect and uh, analyze this information. So lo looking at this as really a network here, we see on the left our enterprise network. We've got a DNS tunnel client. Let's say perhaps this is a device that's infected with malware. The malware has been sniffing around the network, has located some sensitive information it wants to exfiltrate or pass through the firewall to the um, the other end of the tunnel, the DNS tunnel server, which the attacker has set up on the internet. And this again appears as a DNS server. And then from there, it can basically deconstruct the information from DNS into back to the original protocol, send it to the destination. So here we see our information that we were wanting to steal with these, are these blue little packets on the left that we see are being transported through our tunnel. And the tunnel client encodes the information into a DNS query that's passed through the firewall to the DNS tunnel server, which again looks like an authoritative name server on the internet. It's authoritative for a given zone uh, to which the query um, includes as a suffix and which the DNS will happily uh, route res uh, uh, queries to. And then we'll basically then take that information, pass it on to the destination. Now, an example of this, uh, we've got, let's say we want to do a put transaction on my tunnel client. I want to just put information, that's just the way the attacker, let's say, set it up in this case, uh, just to do a put of information up to a web server that the attacker has set up. And then ba basically because of the rules of DNS, uh, you've got to basically encode the message uh, into 64-byte uh, uh, labels. That's basically how long each kind of example dot um, you know, between the dots, so to speak, and then uh, it has to be in ASCII format. So typically you'll see some form of encoding of the information. In this case, I'm just looking at a base 32 encoding, but there's a variety of encoding techniques that can be used. And then basically formulate the DNS query by inserting the dots. You know, so for every uh, 63rd or 64th uh, byte, you insert a, uh, a dot just to create a new label. And then total length, you know, also add the suffix for the endpoint, the tunnel-example.com 
domain name, and that again is the domain that the attacker has garnered or registered with the domain registrar as the tunnel endpoint, and so that is going to then serve as you know my DNS query is going to traverse the domain tree down to the tunnelexample.com DNS server, and it'll basically issue this query to that server, thereby communicating the information. So uh, in the form of a question. And then the tunnel server, of course, will decapsulate that, take out the dots, strip off the suffix, pass that on, you know, reconstruct the message as it continues. Here's just kind of the first chunk of that message in this example, but it'll reformulate that on the back end to the destination. And then it can also, the tunnel endpoint can also send back replies in the form of answers so that it looks like a normal DNS transaction. There are a variety of tunneling utilities that are available out there. Uh, so uh, there's actually a good paper by the SANS Institute, SANS.org, uh, that has a, a variety of these spelled out in terms of um, what, to, uh, what the characteristics are. Uh, but you can see there's just a, a vast variety. Let's say the first couple here, we'll just walk through DNS to TCP, uh, basically comprises a Linux server, let's say on the tunnel endpoint side and a Windows client, uh, and it supports key and TXT RR types. So it doesn't necessarily have to be an A query as we showed in our example. I can use uh, even obsolete records like the key and then text or our types are certainly legitimate. I can be used for uh, just uh, sending uh, uh, arbitrary text. DNS cat P, Java based software runs on uh, Unix system, supports A and C name. Uh, cat B supports also a, a wider variety of RR types. So you can see that there's a variety of utilities here that have been defined. There's others out there as well that are not listed here, uh, but uh, suffice it to say that there are many, many ways to encode information into DNS and to transmit that over your, uh, your network and uh, appearing as le just a legitimate DNS query. So what can you do to protect yourself against DNS tunneling? Well, first you need to actually be looking for it, try to detect it. And one way you can look for it is by looking at the payload of your DNS packets, uh, the queue name size, the query name size, at capacity. So this is basically, in our example, we stuffed our labels up to 63, 64 bytes, added a dot, added another label, finally suffixed that with our domain name coming up with the close to the 256 max queue uh, name size. Um, yeah, that's not certainly a, a slam dunk uh, to indicate that that is tunneling. Uh, it is indicative of potential tunneling, but it is certainly by no means conclusive. Q name entropy. So entropy is, is kind of a, a measure of randomness. Um, you know, these days there are a lot of content delivery networks that kind of reroute queries or reformulate queries uh, that look very similar to what we saw in our example in terms of the, just the randomization of characters. So again, this might be indicative and not conclusive. Uh, use of uncommon Q types, so we saw a key, for example, uh, that is an obsolete RR type, so use of that should be, uh, you know, certainly a yellow flag, if not a red flag, uh, for the use of that uh, uncommon Q type. Uh, Q name character patterns, so there are certain tunneling uh, uh, formulations that uh, may use certain character strings that, you know, are common and can be used as, a, again, an indicator. But as you can see here, all of these are really not conclusive uh, ways to detect tunneling by just looking at the payload itself. But in looking at traffic, where you can look at multiple packets and perhaps try to correlate packets between a pair of destinations, perhaps a tunnel endpoint and a, um, a tunnel client uh, in the form of a DNS query lookup and, and routing of several packets in a bursty mode, you can look at multiple correlated packets, large pairwise payloads or bursts, client-initiated uh, iterative queries. And an iterative query is a query where I'm not, uh, I don't set the recursion desired bit, so I'm just saying here, just route it to this destination. Uh, so um, it's uh, kind of trying to bypass, in essence, the recursive server uh, that you might have set up in your network. So that's uh, one way, uh, one thing to look at as well. And then uh, the authoritative server itself, what, it, what is you know, uh, positioning itself as the authoritative server, but in reality is the tunnel endpoint, uh, perhaps the reputation where that uh, IP address, its location, uh, the registrar of the domain, all of these can serve as potential 
items to be looked at with respect to the reputation of the domain server and of the zone that it's serving. And then really also monitoring your hosts on your network for potential malware, uh, for tunneling, the existence of tunneling software. So looking for things that are installed there that are not authorized or, uh, you know, if, if it's a device under your control, of course, to make sure that there's uh, no illicit software running that could perhaps be uh, tunneling and could be uh, raise a flag for investigation. So hopefully this uh, short video gave you an overview of DNS tunneling and some of the steps you can take to detect and prevent its presence in your network.